Hi guys, today I will be reviewing this LCR-Z3 component tester and I mainly bought this tester because I wanted to be able to test capacitors which my normal meter does not uh, yeah, so, uh, but besides uh, capacitors it can test a whole range of other components and I was wondering if this is any good, if it's any uh, a little accurate or something so yeah, let's see if I can put this to the test um, so let's start by using a capacitor first, because that's the reason I got this. Um, and before I continue, uh, I have to say this device cost me uh, around twenty dollars or something. Um, and yeah, it's it. Uh, I got it uh, like this. Uh, it, it has no casing or, or anything. It, uh, I put a battery in it, and I have to probably uh, print a case or buy a case for this device. Uh, uh, anytime soon be it, because it won't last very long uh, like this and this is the back side as you can see a crystal some pr the processor and some other capacitors and resistors on the back and on the front it's only the component holder and a switch it actually has uh, the, the, the bare metal uh, printed circuit board thing uh, on it which is very nice because uh, now I can solder my own clips on it um, to, to measure components without putting them in here and bending them uh, like I have to do for now for this video. Um, so yeah, let's put it to the test. This is... Um, I don't know, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I would start with the capacitor. Um, let's put it in there. So the pin 1 is pin 1 of course, 2, 3 and then all the other pins are also pin 1 and that's very handy because I can stick it anywhere in here as long as I do not connect it to pin 1 over there and all the other pins because that won't work of course because in this case I put it in pin 2 and one of the 1 pins and then let's test it um, I don't know if you can see it on camera no I think you cannot uh, so I have to pick up the device um, and test again there we go testing yeah capacitor there we go um, and there we go, 950 nanofarads. This is probably a 1 microfarad capacitor, so it's 15 uh, nanofarads off, which is not really that bad. It's a uh, voltage loss of 0.4% and an equivalent series resistance of 3.7 ohms. So yeah, that's that's good. Um, I can stick it, of course, the other way around. Um, oh, <laughs> it's going off right now. Um, it didn't uh, really actually display the uh, symbol for the electrolytic capacitor. It was just a, rec a regular capacitor symbol. There she is testing. It says the battery is 9.01 volts, and that's uh, still good. Uh, there we go. It's a little different uh, measuring this time, a little, little, little different reading. But I guess that's okay. Now it's between pin 1 and pin 2, and there's the capacitor symbol. So that's for an electrolytic capacitor, and here I have a, uh, a ceramic disc capacitor with the rating of 332, that is 330 uh, 100 picofarads. So let's put it in here between pin and 2 and 3 and test it. There we go, 3281 picofarads. So that's, that's probably good. Um, the capacitor is Chinese, this device is Chinese, so uh, both uh, uh, are okay, I guess, this time. Let's put them in bit between pin 1 and 2, and let's see if I can get the same reading. My battery is slowly degrading, 3338 uh, three, 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 picofarad, so that's, that's good. So, that's as far as capacitors go, let's put some other things in here. Let's start with a diode, a normal 1N4001 rectifier diode. Here we go. There we go. D diode between pin 1 and pin 2 in this position, that is correct. Capacitance of 8 picofarads and a forward voltage of 655 millivolts. And this was just a normal rectifier diode. I've got a Zener diode over here. And 
yeah, it would be great if this device could measure the difference between these two diodes. Um, let's see if I can get the focus over here. In a little bit, yeah. It's a senior diode with a forward voltage of 4.7 volts, um, but it will not detect that. That that would be awesome if it if it did that, but yeah, it cannot. And let's see what's next. Yeah, the first nice thing to see is the LED in here. Of course, it measures as a, as a diode, but you can also see it measuring. And there we go, 2.78 volt forward voltage, and that's actually good to know because that is the voltage this LED needs. No, no, I, I should probably should point the LED at the camera. Nice. There we go. Um, yeah, well, let's see. Uh, I've got a, a MOSFET here which I cut from desoldered from another project. Let's see if I can fit it in here. Yes, I can. There we go. MOSFET. This it is connected at this setup: uh, a gate, drain, source, capacitance, and 3.3 volt. Anything. Um, <laughs> I don't use MOSFETs that much. Um, yeah, I do use MOSFETs. I've got the LM317 over here, which it cannot measure, and that's not 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 very strange that it uh, does not measure this because uh, this is actually a variable device when it takes a resistance at one of the pins and then uh, the, the output is, is different um, according to the resistance on one of the pins so it differs all the time it, so it has actually trouble measuring the, this device and uh, that's not strange there we go no unknown or damaged part it's not strange that it can not measure an LM317 um, I like the LM317s very, very much. Uh, you can use them in all kinds of power supplies um, without having to, to use uh, all complicated ICs or anything. Um, yeah, let's see, a crystal. Would be great if it measured crystals. But it cannot, no. It's a 4000 Hz crystal, it cannot measure it. It would be an absolute boss if it could do that, but that's it cannot and one of the most basic components let's see in the resistor let's see the value is if you can see it get it on camera come on in focus please there we go a little bit here green and brown and brown that's five of one one so it's 510 ohms let's put it in here no I'm making a mess here. Yeah. There we go. 505.2 ohms. That's that's good. It's uh, it has a cold band, so it can uh, uh, can be off of five percent, and it's well within that range. As long as this device is accurate, of course. That's another resistor. Let's see, I've got last two components to test for this device are uh, two uh, basic resistors, uh, <laughs> transistors, uh, and one NPN and PNP. Let's see if it can measure the difference. There we go, PNP, uh, transistor, collector, base, emitter, on that setup, that is correct. Very, very nice, very, very nice indeed. And the last device I will be testing, NPN, collector base emitter. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing. Um, I forgot probably one thing. I have to get it, uh, get it here. And that is this inductor. It can actually measure inductors, and that that was uh, I was uh, really amazed when it <coughs> when it. Uh, was able to measure inductors. Let's get a, pry one of the leads out. So I can put it in this device, this LCR-3 T3. There we go. There we go, inductor. 
0 0.2 ohms resistance, that's quite low, and 13.95 millihenries. I was actually very amazed that this device could measure inductors, uh, but it can. And it recognized them as an inductor and not as a capacitor or, or anything else. And that's, that's really great. I'm very happy with this uh, uh, component tester. Uh, even for this, this price, it's around $20 or something, it's, it's a very good device. I will have to make my own case or build or buy some case uh, anywhere um, for it. Because I will be using this uh, a lot. It's probably a little easier to use than, than my meter all the time. Uh, I have to ch to find out the uh, if my meter is a little bit more accurate or this one is a little bit more accurate. But I guess I will find out over time. So that's my review of the LCR-T3. Um, so thanks for watching.